Hello everybody, how you doing? This is Mr. Douse. On this video I'm going to talk about a special kind of similar triangles problem that I call the, the one side splitter. Keep in mind this is part 4. If you have not looked at my videos for part 1 and part 2, you're, you might struggle on part 4. Welcome to go to my website and uh, look under geometry lessons under these titles to watch those videos. Uh, but this one's uh, over uh, the one side splitter. Uh, I'm going to explain why I call this a one side splitter. Uh, but keep in mind these are still similar triangles, so I still have two triangles that are similar to each other. I've got triangle uh, JHR in this case, so from J to H to R. And then it is similar to triangle BHE from B to H to E. And so on the one side splitters, you're going to have the small triangle is always going to end up being part of the big triangle. Uh, and if I point this out here, I've got a small triangle that is uh, sharing the sides of the big triangle. And this is called a one side splitter because this side of this small triangle is splitting the side from R to H uh, into two, uh, two parts. And so side RH here is being chopped into two pieces. Uh, and now understand here from R to E, this is, is, e, uh, is X. And from E to H is 3. So this segment's X, this segment is 3. From R to H, I'm going to end up having to combine these because I'm adding these segments together. Uh, so this whole side here is going to end up being X plus 3. Uh, and, and so that's important to understand. Uh, now, since these are similar triangles, these triangles still have corresponding angles are congruent and corresponding sides are proportional, and so we're still going to use this information to help me uh, solve these problems. Uh, but moving on here, we're going to solve this, this triangle here. We're going to end up finding this X. It says if triangle JHR is similar to triangle BHE, we need to find X. And so our goal is to figure out what X is. And so similar triangles, I always do small triangle to big triangle. You're welcome to do big triangle over small triangle, but this is just what I do. Uh, make sure you do what your teacher tells you to do, though. Uh, and so small triangle over big triangle, it's not so easy to tell which side is, the, or which triangle is the small and which one's the big and, and which sides correspond with each other. And so I have my students draw these triangles again. Uh, the first step on these problems is don't be lazy. Uh, you want to end up drawing these triangles, and you want to make these triangles look something like what you have uh, on the problem. And so I'm going to draw this triangle here. It's going to represent the big triangle. And so we're, that's representing the big triangle. You're welcome to label J, R, and H here if you want to, but I'm not going to. And then I'm going to draw a, a triangle that looks similar to it, but just it's going to be a little bit smaller. Uh, and so a lot of my students don't do this, and then they end up plugging in the numbers wrong. This is to help you organize your thoughts. Uh, and if I look here, we have uh, on the big triangle, we have 10. So this 10 is going to go 10 here. And then this side here is represented from R to H. It's going to be this X and the 3. We need to add these together to get me X plus 3. And then on the, the smaller triangle, we have the 5 is going to go right here. And then the 3's on the bottom. And I don't have any information over here, so I don't have any information here. Uh, and so that's going to kind of help us simplify this. Uh, now, you might not be sure which sides uh, correspond to each other. Uh, and if you're not quite sure, um, you can look at the statement here. Uh, this says... Uh, J and B, these both come first, and so since this is a similarity statement and J and B both go uh, first, then I know that angle J and angle B are going to be congruent to each other. And so J is right here and B is right here. Uh, likewise, uh, we know that H and H are similar. Well, that makes sense. And so uh, H is, is this guy right here and right here. Again, if you want to label this as, as H, H, and we know this was a J up here. Uh, we know this is a B right here. And then we have an E, and we have an R. That might help you understand this. Uh, but H and H are congruent, and then R and E are going to be congruent as well. And so these angles correspond and are congruent to each other. And I'm missing an arc here. So uh, anyways, so uh, with that being said, we can now look at um, and figure out which sides correspond to each other. Uh, like, for example, I know right now that since 10 and 5 are opposite uh, the angles that are congruent to each other, uh, then I know that 10 and 5 uh, correspond to each other. And this is small over big, so I'm going to do 5 over 10. Small over big. This is the small triangle. This is the big triangle. So 5 over 10. And then also we have opposite uh, this one arc, opposite this one arc is the uh, x plus 3 and the 3. So these sides correspond with each other. So 3 is the small and x plus 3 is the big. Uh, hopefully you understood what I did here. Uh, right now I can cross multiply and I, and I can solve for x. Now, now this is a little tricky here. 
whenever I have more than just uh, a number or more than just an x, like I have an x plus 3 in this case, I tell my students to put parentheses around it, and that's going to help you solve this proportion. And so when I end up cross multiplying here, 5 times x plus 3, this helps you understand that you're going to have to end up distributing the 5 into the parentheses. Uh, otherwise, you might make a simple math mistake there. And then if I multiply 10 by 3, I can now move on to the next step here. So when I do 5 times x, that gets me 5x. Five, 5 times 3 is 15, and it equals 10 times 3 is 30. And my goal is to isolate this x. I've got videos on this. You're welcome to watch them. Uh, and if I keep going here, I get 5x equals 15. And then divide both sides by 5 to isolate the x, and x is equal to 3. And so right now, uh, my answer is, is 3 for x. And if you're not quite sure if that's right, I'm a big fan of double-checking your work. I'm going to plug in 3 for x. And if I work this out, I still have the 5 over 10, and then this is a 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. And I can cross-multiply these, and I'd get 30 equals 30, or I can just reduce the fraction, and they each equal 1 half and 1 half. And so since these balance out, I know 3 had to be the answer, and so x was 3 here. So anyways, hopefully uh, you understood what's going on there. Moving on, we have um, another example. Similar to what we just had, but in my opinion, this is the hardest of the three problems. It says, if triangle DAE is similar to triangle DCF, find DE. So our goal is to figure out what DE is here. Uh, now keep in mind, I've got this small triangle in here uh, is inside this big triangle. And so, again, I'm a fan of uh, drawing triangles to help you uh, organize your thoughts here. So I'm going to draw a small one. This, this this triangle here is representing this triangle. Keep in mind, they look similar. If you just start drawing a triangle and it doesn't look like what, you're, what you have on the picture, you might start putting the numbers in the wrong spot. I have a lot of students who do that, and so don't make that simple mistake. And then I'm going to draw the bigger triangle here. And so right now, uh, this x is this x right here. Uh, and if you want to, again, you don't have to. You could label uh, D, E, and A. And then we would have D, F, uh, and C. Some of you might want to do that. Some of you might not. Uh, but again, that will help us understand which angles correspond with each other. So X is here, and we know 20 goes here. And then the whole side from D to F, I need to add X and 14. This is 14. This is X. I need to combine these two. And that gets me X plus 14. And then uh, the bottom side of this triangle from F to C is 30. Uh, and again, so let, let's look at these angles here real quick. Uh, D and D come first, so these angles are congruent to each other. Uh, A and C come uh, second, so A and C are going to be congruent to each other. And then E and F come third. And so we know those angles have to be congruent to each other. Uh, I just realized I forgot to label a side. We know um, from a D to C is 45. Uh, but if I look here from D to A, D to A, I don't have what this is. So since I don't have any information here, I can't use this 45 in the problem here. Uh, because the sides opposite here, I don't have a corresponding uh, uh, measurement to go here. Uh, and so I can't use that in the proportion. Uh, but let's start solving this. Let's do a small over big. So I do small over big. So small triangle over big triangle. And I'm going to end up solving uh, the proportion right now. And so let's see here. Uh, X is opposite the two arcs. Uh, opposite of the two arcs here is, is x plus 14, so x and x plus 14 go together. Small is x, big is the x plus 14. And then opposite um, the one arc here is the 20. Opposite the one arc here is the 30. So 20 and 30 correspond with each other, and so I know if 20 is small, 30 is big. And then I'm going to end up cross multiplying. And so I have x times 30, which is 30x. Uh, now, I've got an x plus 14. I'm going to put parentheses around this, and that'll help me understand what I need to do here. And so um, 30x stays 30x. 20 times x becomes 20x. 20 times 14 becomes 280. And if I get x on one side here, by subtracting 20 on both sides, I end up getting uh, 10x equals 280. Now, if I divide both sides by 10 to isolate x, you see that x becomes 28. And 28 is my answer here. And again, if you're not quite sure, uh, again, double check it by plugging in uh, what you got for x into x. 
Uh, and so we have 28. Uh, 28 plus 14 is 42 equals 20 over 30. Well, 28 times 30 is 480. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, it's 840. Sorry about that. And then 42 times 20 is also 840. And again, since these balance out, I know 28 had to be the answer. And so I know that x is 28. Uh, so next problem, very last one. Uh, it says if uh, triangle NJK is similar to triangle MJL, we need to find ML. Again, I've got a small triangle in here inside of a big triangle, and so I'm going to draw those triangles. Oops, wrong one. So small triangle. And then I'm going to draw a, a bigger, bigger triangle here. Uh, might as well do it this way here. Let's do a J, N, and K. I also have a J, M, and L. And so I know right now uh, that J, K is 15. I know that uh, N, K is 12. We know from J to L, J, oops, let's just say L here, my bad. This should say L, I goofed up here. From J to L is, is all the way down this side. I've got to add these two together, 15 and 25, and that gets me 40. And then from M to L, from M to L is X. And so right now, I can do a small triangle over big triangle, and I can set up my proportion. I have the small triangle right here and the big triangle right here. And so uh, I'm not going to do the corresponding sides here. I've already showed you that trick. Uh, we have 15 and 40 correspond to each other. Uh, and so, uh, and we also have 12 corresponds with x. Again, I can use these uh, uh, relationships and these statements to help me figure out which angles go with which angle. Uh, and so I've got uh, 12 is the small triangle, x is the big triangle, I have 15 is the small triangle, and I have 40 is the big triangle, and now I can cross multiply to solve for x. Well, I have 12 times 40 equals x times 15. Uh, 12 times 40 is uh, 480 equals 15x. Divide both sides by 15, and I get 32 equals x. Double check it by plugging in 32 here. If I do 12 times 40, that's 480. If I do 32 times 15, that's 480. And so these balance out, and so 32 has to be my answer for x. Anyways, hopefully this helps you understand how to do these kinds of problems, the ones I call the one-side splitter, and have a good day.